In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oftentimes in Scripture and in life, two things are true at the same time, and um, even though they may be in opposition. For instance, I think the mother of the sons of Zebedee, we're talking James and John, that they came and worshipped Jesus, and then at the same time the mother of her sons, with the cooperation of the two boys, wanted to know what place they will have in the kingdom. Those seem to be completely at odds, and they are. However, I think that that perhaps their worship and adoration of Jesus Christ was indeed genuine, and their desire for um, eternal power was also genuine. It's not always that black and white. It's that war that's within us all the time, that we are here sincerely, offering our prayers devoutly, yet at the same time we struggle with the lures of the world and the call to power. It's not always either or, it's typically both within us. And that's what we call that, that battle that wages, that rages within, that we have to, with the Lord's help, uh, put down. The sons of Zebedee and their mother misunderstood something fundamental about the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And that is, we do not follow him, we do not love him, we do not come here on a Wednesday early in the morning for this Holy Eucharist for any temporal benefit of ours. Although we receive benefits in following Jesus, the peace that passes understanding, the feeling of his love and grace, all those things. But if we're honest, there's often some social benefits of being a public Christian, at least they were, or maybe we can network in a community of faith. All those things are always present. They hang around, and we have to be mindful of them. And if we're not careful, we can find ourselves giving more attention to those other lures that take away from what it means to truly follow Jesus. We don't follow him so that we may be elevated in this life. To truly follow Jesus, to take up our cross, is to submit ourselves to the process of having all of those lures and accolades stripped from us so that all that we have left is Jesus Christ on the cross. And now, do we really love him? Do we want to be united with him? Do we want to identify with him by being crucified with him? And it's that purging of that ambition, that purging of that need that we have to be empowered, to be seen, to be noticed, to be loved, that brings us to that understanding that Jesus Christ came among us not to be the popular one, but to be the servant of all. And that spiritual power comes not in lording it over people, but in serving them. For the Lord came not to be served, but to serve. It's a hard thing to really digest. It's a hard thing to fully understand. In fact, I don't think we fully grasp it this side of heaven. But may we have grace this day to move deeper into that truth. And may this day we have, this, may we have the strength to push down that urge to lean into the praise and the accolades that we get for being good Christians and to find opportunities to abase ourselves and to serve for the sake of his kingdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.